days ago, and it was kind of like something on there that was kind of stirring, but I was going to ask you hey, about nigga, like, ask me. Nigga, stop beating around the bush. Okay, I wanted to know, though. You know, I don't like to surprise nobody in this now. Still beating around the bush. Okay, bad. We in it. What's happening? What's the question you want to ask? Okay, the question I was going to ask you about, it was something about you didn't want to help or you was kind of angry at a bad attitude hey, at a funeral. Hey, listen. <clears throat> and this the honest... This the honest truth about this. The whole situation about the funeral that she brought up that uh, we weren't willing to pay for it and I took the money back. The truth is... Yeah, I did. I did take the $8,000 back, but I'm going to tell you honestly the reason why. First, the, the funeral was actually paid for, the, totally 100% paid for. I think we had like, between me and the label, it was 21, what is was it, 21000 Was it 21000 right? It was 21000 at the funeral home. Now, first of all, let me say this. The last thing, I'm going to try my best, because me and Sheena have, we have a, a, a great cordial. We we had, I, I still respect her, I still love her to death. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not surprised, and I don't hate for what she have done, but I'm disappointed at her. Right. You know, I'm disappointed in her, and I'm disappointed in her because everything she said, at the time she was saying, saying it, I kind of sat back and told everybody, don't, don't respond to it, you know, because my thing was, it was grief, you know. I know she lost Brick. I know she lost the baby girl, the twin, and I know she lost Duck. And I knew, I knew what, I knew what position Duck played within that family. So I know Duck, Duck was the, Duck was the glue to that family. Uh, so when 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 it first started, the day, man, I'm telling you, the day Doug died, that's when the bull, where the bullshit was already in play before he died. The snakes was already, the snakes had already laid the plan down before he died. Right. And I'm not saying that she, I would never say that she was a snake. I'm saying she allowed that snake to infiltrate what we had, what we had built, what we had going, and we was going in the right direction. Uh, you know, first of all, I want to apologize. I, I, well, I, the only person that really know, I never told nobody this, but Doug's dad. And me and, me and Doug's dad had a conversation. He called me one day. And I think Doug, what's 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 Doug at the very not not Jasmine, uh, Nikki, don't no, Nikki, yeah, right? Nini, 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 Nini. I'm sorry, Nini. Nini, Nini. Uh, she was on the phone, and the one thing Doug did, he told me was, "Hey, Manny, you know, I really I don't have a problem with you." He said, "Every time I talk to my son, my son only spoke highly of you. My son said you was like a father to him." He said, the thing, the problem I have is if you said you love my son like you did, why you, why you didn't give her the money? And I told, and he never knew this. And I, and I, and the first thing I did was apologize. So I told him, I said something, something to the effect like, uh, you know, first of all, man, I want to apologize to you. And I did love your son. I, I looked at, I looked at Duck like he was one, like he was actually my son. Matter of fact, all these little cats, all these young men, I look at them like they my son. And right. uh, I just let, I just allowed Sheena to put me in a petty situation. I ain't that type of guy. You know what I mean? The, the, the discussion was, what made me make that petty decision was, she turned the label money down. She, cause I don't want to make, I, I'm not trying to make her look bad. She wanted, she wanted to know why the 21000 we had up there for Doug's funeral, while we just wouldn't convert it over to a check to give to him. And I was explaining to her, it, I can give you the cash, but on their end, they have to, it have to be invoiced. 
They need an invoice. So what they basically was asking me to do was, okay, you go up in there, man, and you make all the film, y'all make all the film, let her make all the film arrangements she want to make. Have the funeral home send us the invoice over so we'll know where to send the, the check to. Mm -hmm. Her thing was, what she said was, well, why, why they just won't cut me the check? And I tried to explain to her what was, it don't work that way. So her next response was, I don't know if it was that day or the day after. Her, her response was, all right, now, fuck, y'all keep the money. Just keep the money. So they called me. They asked me, man, what's the problem? What's the hold up? I said, she said she good. She don't need the money. A couple of days later, she called me. She said, man, uh, are you still going to give me that $8,000? And I tell Sheena, yeah, I told her, I said, yeah, Sheena, I got you, yeah, I got the 8000 And in the turn, the same breath, this is exactly what she said. She said, all right, man, you know it's going to be a private funeral. And at that time, the pandemic had kicked in. So, and I knew at that time, it was like 10 people in a time in the funeral home. And I said, yeah, Sheena, I understand. She said, so you can go. But your kids can't go. Now, I'm sitting here and I'm saying, hold on. I can go, but the same guys who slept in the same bed, ate at the same table, did maybe some shit I don't know about or may know about, and you're gonna, you're not gonna give them, the, you're not gonna give them the okay to come to the funeral, but in a, the same situation. People call it, oh yeah, y'all get the address in the front. No, we ain't get it. Well, she giving the address out and she want them to wear these colors, these colors, these colors. And she never wants, so I, I'm calling, I'm calling my kids, my boy, I'm like, all right, did she call you all and, ask, and tell you all where the funeral address is? No. So it's like you asking me for my $8,000, oh yeah, you could come, but they can't come. And I allow her to put me in a position but I made a weak ass decision like that. And to this day, man, it's not a, it's not it's not a day that I already I regret that. And I regret that because at that that split moment I, I made it about her. And it was it should have never been that situation should have never been about her. So, you know, her saying that her saying that the funeral was paid, man, the funeral was totally paid. I mean, everything was paid for. Everything. When I say everything from it was twenty one thousand up there, and if she needed more, if she needed more, it wasn't no problem to get it for it. It, it wasn't no problem, you know. So that's the only thing I really got to say about that. So the, the situation she's saying it wasn't paid for, we didn't contribute. It was paid for, we contributed. Yes, I did. I did that petty shit, and I apologize. I apologize to her dead daddy for that, because at the end of the day, that was my job. I just wanted to be able to deliver that man back to his daddy. We knew his daddy was coming home for like what seven, eight months. He was telling he coming, he coming, coming. So and my, right, bro. right. And my job was to deliver him to his daddy. And, hey, right. and if he wanted his daddy to take over the situation, man, I'd have stood right back next to him. Because that's where it should have been. No, nah, let me talk, man. Yeah. Right. yeah. So, I mean, that's just what it is, bro. Next, yeah. next question. Yeah, I totally get that. You know, um, Another thing I wanted to ask you, you know, because we finally get a chance to speak with you. You know, you was kind of like a myth in the drill culture. We all knew about you. We started seeing interviews and stuff about you on the Internet. So I do want to ask you a few more questions. It's kind of like a rumor that's going on. A lot of videos that's posted on YouTube about, you know, LBG Duck Manager and took his money. Oh, you played the label deal with him and took all the, the, the royalties and things like that. Is it a way you want to kind of clear that up? All right, let me let me let me let me clear that up. And I and, and what I'm what I'm what I'm finna say, I'm just I'm basically going out what I'm basically responding to some of the things she said. So it's easy to kind of take what she said and what I said and put them together. All right. right. It is true, Doug got the deal. Doug got the deal, thanks. Doug got the deal for three hundred and twenty-five thousand. The label cut Doug a check. The, the label gave him an advance of one hundred and fifty thousand. They turned around and said, "Okay, 
uh, for the 20% management fee, I was supposed to get like 72, 73,000. I told him, no, nah, send me 50. Because the time I hold me, young Dutchie, Duck, sat down at the table, and this was the discussion. Every dime that they send me, I'm going to push it back into y'all. Because the thing is, she knew, everybody that around knew, how can I say this without? Knew the financial situation. It wasn't like, I, I wasn't hurting for no I wasn't hurt for no money. I was okay. You know what I mean? So I did that out of, out of straight love. And I always wanted to see them boys. I always wanted to see them boys win. I wanted to put them boys in a position, help them put them in a position where a lot of this shit they were going through, I know one thing. If, you, if, your, if your energy is focused towards something else, you don't have time for this BS. So that was my reason. I never, I never took... I never took no my hey, one thing these boys could tell you, show money, anything. I never took a dime from none of them. Never. Every show, every show dollar they got, dumb, dutchy, cash, duck, I hand them every dime over. I never took a 20%. And the only reason why I took the 20% for that, because the lawyer like, nah, I'll go ahead and take it. But my intention was to put it back behind them. And which I did, man. I did that. I I got a box of, damn, why, why, why the, do me a favor, go upstairs in that closet, in that, that office and get that box. I got a box of receipt. I'm like, in a situation, my money, I'm over 100,000, 100, 100, 150,000 into their situation. And I would never ask for it back. So I never took no money. It was 100, it was 100, they gave Doug 150,000. They sent me 50. Now what a label do, a label don't give you the whole 325000 up front. And this is what I was trying to explain to a skilled people set. This is what I'm trying to explain to them. Okay. Okay. They gave him they gave him advance of 150000 They cut me $50,000 out of check. His lawyer was paid a 5% fee, which technically the label supposed to pay it but in the contract they're cured that debt through duck so it wound up coming out that money now it was so i'm gonna say it was roughly god i want to say i'll get a ballpark figure so i'm, I'm gonna go with the hundred twenty five thousand. it was less than that left on the table duck had projects to deliver so with excuse me with the record industry is Everything they do, when they when they trying to place a song on a on a playlist, put the song in the DJ hand, that's a that's a that's a cost that occurred and you, the artist, pays that cost. So at the end, they pretty much ate up they pretty much ate up the back end money. So when I found out the trips they sending us to, the, the, the producers they want us to work with, the studios they want us to work with. When we did an audit, the back end money pretty much was gone. And that was before we even dropped. That's before even the EP dropped. So now we down, now the problem came in where we, the money wasn't there. The back end money wasn't there. So the next best thing we had to do was either bid for more money or I had to finance the situation. So right. that's what I did. Because one thing I didn't want him, I didn't want him to keep occurring a debt with them people. So every placement that had to be paid for on that album came out of my pocket. Every video, uh, Mama House video, what was the, what was the video Sheena was in? We did with the with the road, look what huh? Look what happened. Yeah, look what happened. Uh, two or three more videos I paid for out of pocket. I, I one of them I was one of them the label recouped me for. It. The other ones I never got recouped for. I didn't really chip about it. So at the end of the day, bro, it it wasn't it wasn't no hundred twenty five thousand dollars left. We ate the back end money. We we had delayed, we we I'm gonna say we did because we ate the back end money trying to push one or two songs, going on trips to LA, work with 
producers, in studios. That's the nature of the business. So it was it really wasn't I mean it went from right now it went from me taking 125000 to me taking to me selling a song for 14000 You know what I mean? And it's like, Sheena, when is you gonna when is you gonna stop? And you and, and the killer part about it, bro, Sheena knows that's not the truth. Everybody, everybody in that circle, in my circle, everybody knows that's not the truth. You got, you got, because I really don't want to say nobody's name. But and if I do, and and, and they 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 don't like it, look, man, I apologize. But at the end of the day, I'm just I'm known to be to at least try to tell the truth. So, you know, it's no one, it's no one would stand up beside her and say, yeah, Duck and us had a conversation that Manny was taking this. Oh, I felt Manny was doing this. What you what can do, I can, I can present a hundred cats, a hundred people, friends of his, associates, producers, videographers, uh, and say, man, nah, we got, we, the conversation we had with him was the total opposite. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, little Chris, you didn't talk to little Chris. Look, Chris will tell you, you know, man, man, this, bro. I would do anything for, I would have done, any, and I have. Anything for that kid, bro. Anything. I didn't give a fuck what it was. You know what I mean? I, I would do it for him. And it's just unfortunate. It's just unfortunate. It's unfortunate, man. It's just unfortunate, bro. That's, I don't, sometimes, man, this shit, I don't even know what to say about this shit. Yeah, I, I understand you. I mean, I can see where you're coming from. Uh, and I don't want to make this like a bashing thing because I got a lot of respect for Mama Duck. And I got respect for you, too, because I've heard stories that you, you know, you was behind a lot of the LBG, you know, helping with, like, on the back end side, behind the scenes. I was told that, you know, I'm a drill historian. Um, I want to know one more thing, too, about that, uh, man. I don't kind of much want to stay on it, on it. But I want to know, you know, um, this internet kind of gave you a bad image. You feel that kind of dirty job a little bit? Well, man, let me tell you something, bro. I'm, I'm talking. I don't give a, I don't give a fuck about a motherfucker I don't know. I don't give a fuck about a motherfucker that I have no everyday run in with, that I don't have a relationship with. I know what the internet is and what it's designed for and what it's there for. But what I can tell you, the individuals that know me and the vi individuals that I come, the pillow. Up there. The individuals that I come in contact with every day, they know my character, bro. You can't get one person to sit up and say, yeah, he that type of nigga. And I'm talking about from the streets to the corporate room. I always was straight up and fair, bro. I never, if I took something from a nigga, a nigga knew he had it coming, bro. I'm not that type of guy, bro. That's just not me. And, and the killer thing about it, she know that's not me, man. She know that's not me. Her family know that's not me. And, and, and let me tell you this. I never had a problem with Sheena family. Right now, today, one, uh, someone in the car, we'll talk, we'll talk about the situation. You know, and like I say, I'm not here to bash Sheena, because I love her. You know, but I also know her. And I also I also know the real beef that she had with me. And, and the real beef she had with me, I had no control over. I had no control over Doug asking me. I never asked to be Doug manager. I never asked to be none of their manager. I was, I, when I was, I was that father figure. I was that dude who, y'all want to shoot a video? Okay, what you need? Oh, we need a car. We need my, okay, huh, he go, 20, 30 bucks, he go this kind of car, he go, huh, huh, I'll buy y'all the jewelry, whatever. Anything to the sit shop. And I never had papers on. I I, I didn't want nothing from him. I, like I said, at the end of the day, man, I just wanted these cats to be successful. Because the talent is there. You know? Uh, shit, I got off course. What was he, what was he asking me? No, he's good. No, he cool. You know, so, you know, 
shit. It just like I said, man. You know, it, she gonna see this. I know. I know her. She but gonna go on that little rant, but that's all love, though. Man. That's all it ever been with me. I never, I never. And the crazy thing about it, man, I'm not no internet dude. I don't, I don't get in these kids' beef. I know about it. A lot of these dudes, daddy, I went to school with. I have a relationship with, or some for, and. And I just, I'm just, I just was being that parent, you know. I was being that daddy. Say, okay, y'all want to do this? Look, I'ma support y'all. It was never no paper. It wasn't no papers. It wasn't no papers drawn up. And today was like, no, nah, you gotta do this, man. You just can't. You can't. It was never a paper drawn up. So I basically was handed the manager position, I guess. You know what I mean? Right. I didn't really All want right. it. You know what I mean? But he asked me to do it. You know, and I think I honestly feel like that's why our beef was at. That's where her beef was at with me because he asked me to do it. He didn't ask her to do it, and I feel like she wanted to be that. She wanted to be that person to control everything. And if he would have wanted her to do that, he would have asked her to do that. He didn't ask her to do that. So that problem, you should have that problem with me. And me and her try to have. I try to have this discussion with her, but. It just, I just couldn't get over it. And at the end of the day, like I say, man, I really don't care. I really don't entertain what somebody on the other side of a computer screen or lens. Feel it. But I can understand why, because it's coming from her. And I'm not going to battle with her, because at the end of the day, that's his mother. You know, she lost, she lost Brick Duck, baby girl. She went through a lot. And that was her time. And however, however she choose, what, however what she choose to do with her time, she chose to do with it. Mm -hmm. now, you know, but I had no control over that, man. I so I just I, I made my business, told my kids this. I told them this. One thing I don't allow y'all to do, is you're not gonna disrespect. Mm -hmm. And and people that sit up and say, oh, they did no, no. The only thing I ever seen them to was, Sheena, you need to stop it. Because it was getting out of hand, man. It was getting out of hand to the point where, you know, I, I could sit back and take all the licks. And I didn't mind taking all the licks. But when you got, you know, at the same time, though, dad, you know, I got, I got three boys, four boys that was grieving just as hard. And then when I see my daughters on the internet, they arguing with, with their sisters and brothers. And I'm like, man, this shit is crazy, man. It's crazy. And that's when I just say, man, you know what? Nah, this this got to stop, bro. This this really got to stop, cuz. You know, and I ain't sitting here trying, I'm not, I'm doing everything in my power. Cause I'm not out to trying to call this woman a liar. But I'm just saying, which the conversation she had or she get from somebody, if she could just sit and show me why I took this, like, okay, for instance, for instance, the song, I'm going to bring this up. This, and this is what made me come to that, to that point where, come to that point where I want to, where I want to say, what I wanted to say something because I get a phone call and brother like, man, you see what she said now? And I, I honestly thought, me and her, I thought the way she felt about it, it was over with. Because everything is cooled down. It was cordial. And then I was like, no, nah. they were like, man, go look at it. So I look at it. And then when I see the part where I sold a song for $14,000. Right. $14,000, right. $14, and those proceeds were supposed to go towards Duck Funeral. And then I then I I kept the proceeds and then had them over for the funeral. The first thing. What I always do, every interview she not have, and she get on it with me, I calls. I don't, I don't run to nobody. I get on the phone, I calls. I say, Sheena, why would you tell them people this? Why would you say that, Sheena? You know, and she, it's either she going to say, her favorite thing was, man, I just want closure. But I'm, I'm telling this is not a way to get closure. You know what I mean? This, you can't get no closure bashing me. You know what I'm saying? Telling, telling shit about me. You can't get no closure like that. 
So, but when when it, when it come down to me stealing his front row money and selling a song that I, I had to call around and ask, what the fuck song is he talking about? And then that's when he was like, that's that. What song was that? Like that. Like that. I said, oh, Sheena, you really true. Cause like that, bro. Let me tell you something. I never had that song in my possession. The label had that song in their possession all the time. They sent the A and R down here, booked the studio for a week, ready to check duck temperature. Because they wanted to pipe up for an album. They wanted to get ready for an album. They just wanted to see where his head was at, where his work ethic was at. And that was one of the songs he did. And they took it with him. And if I'm not mistaken, the only person who had the song was Duck and the label, Myth. Memphis. Memphis. Right, Memphis. They was the only two people who had the song. I never had the song. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest. The only connection I had with that song a couple of days after Doug died, the label called me and said, Hey, Manny, listen, we want to do a post-portum album. Am I saying that right? Yeah, post-portum. Post -portum. Okay. They wanted to do that. I said, okay. I said, listen, after the funeral, I can sit down to, with her and, you know, let her know this what you want to do. And we'll discuss it. And we'll kind of reach, because, you know, he can't promote the album. He can't really, you know, perform the album. So if she willing, if she willing, we'll sit down and renegotiate that contract. They was cool with it. But they thing was, man, you know, legally, we can only really negotiate with his next kin, which is his kids and his kids' mothers, since they were so young. I turned around and relayed the message. When I relayed the message, it was, I want to sit at the table. Now, at the time, they may well have been willing to do that. But she come right out the door bashing them. You know what I'm saying? They got insurance policy on them. Blah, 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 blah. And they got to a point where they just didn't want to sit down with them. They said, listen, you, you can sit down. You can talk to her and explain to her what we want to do. I, I turned around and relayed the message. I told her, but I always told her, hey, listen, I don't want to die. You and, and Jasmine, Jasmine, which is Doug Lady, and that's who I had a relationship with. I said, you and Jasmine, y'all sit down. I let y'all know exactly what they gonna, what money, kind of money they talking about. And you know, the kids and y'all will be straight. She didn't want to do it. So next thing I know, she was promoting this, promoting, what was the EP or album? Mm -hmm. She was putting up, putting up on this album. They called me right back. Hey, man, what's up with this? I said, listen, I have nothing to do with that. They said, we know it's on the Big Cloud Records. Now, what folks don't know was we had another situation where another song was dropped while that was a sign label, and it was dropped on the Big Cloud Records. I didn't know anything about it, but I knew what Snake was behind it. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I knew what Snake was behind it. So they asked me about it. I asked Duck about it. Duck said he didn't know nothing about it. I called and told him, look, Duck said he don't know nothing about it. A couple of days later, that song was down. So when, when she was promoting his album, I, I called her and I said, Sheena, listen, don't put the album up because they're gonna have it, take it down. I guess, shit, I guess she felt like I was lying. So she put it up, they called me, and said, Manny, she put it up. I said, I had nothing to do with it. Two days later, it was down. She come out the gate saying, I had it took down. Listen, lady, I have no power to call Apple, Spotify, Tidal, and all these downloadable sites at one time and tell them to take that song down. I would have never done that because at the end of the day, I wanted you to eat. So, so that, I had nothing to do with that, bro. Yeah, and, uh, and I hear you, you know, and I do think it's important that you kind of tell your truth because sometimes these internets are run wild because uh, there's a lot of stories that was about you on the internet. I do want to know one thing, though. You know, another thing I kind of want to know that I think is important um, as far as with FBG Duck, what, was it really true? Because nobody really asked nobody as close to him as like a manager. We always ask like closeness as friends and stuff. But was the blackballing really real for FBG Duck? Was it hard getting them on and managing? And say, listen, we can't have 
You know what I mean? So it, we, we was getting a lot of that, but am I saying that was stopping that movement for them? No, nah, that wasn't stopping the movement for them. That wasn't that, but it was expected. But this is, this, I mean, this is, it's a, it, at that point you look at it, it was a competition. So with that, in, 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 the, in the art of competition, you use whatever tools you could use. So that's what it was, mate. Right, you know, that was something I wanted to ask you. And I got another question I kind of want to ask you. And it's the last one I really want to ask you linked to uh, Mama Duck. But I do think this is a big question because I think this, and this kind of trended on Say Cheese TV, uh, in the, this interview that dropped recently. It kind of said something about your sons, too. Now, it kind of said that, you know, you kind of don't really look out for Mama Duck anymore. It's, you kind of turned don't. Uh, you got anything to say about that? Yeah, I got something to say about it. Listen, my relationship, my relationship with my kids is stronger than anything. And you know, their lives is to me. You understand what I'm saying? So when they see someone, when they see someone attacking me, what you think they supposed to do? You know what I mean? They gonna you gonna you gonna turn around and you gonna turn around and feed a person and then turn around and let that person kick in your ass? It don't work like that way, man. It don't work that and believe me, man. We we my job Doug had four kids out there. My job, if y'all always partners, my job is for them kids, you ought to pick up where he left off at. And we and, and in some some sense we have done that. We didn't reach out, because we really, I really had contact with one mother. And I like I always tell her, I think the last time we talked to, to Jasmine, we sent, we sent, we sent money for Christmas for the kids. And we told her, you know, Jasmine, she, she, sweet woman, sweet woman. She was like, well, I'm gonna let them know. We told them, nah, I don't let them know, cause it's, it, it wasn't nothing, it wasn't nothing for publicity. It was, right. we loved that dude. I, I, that was, that was a brother, that dude was like a kid to me. No, he was, you know? And, and like I tell her, if anything CJ need, them other kids, Aiden need, the rest of them kids need, you make the phone call. She know who she can call. You know what I mean? And, and if we can't get it right there, we get us a couple days, we'll get it together and we'll give it to her. There's no way. Man, listen, before Doug died, bro, and bef before a certain snake came in, and I, this is exactly what I want to talk about, I'll get to that in a minute. A certain person came back in, man, them, it was a beautiful relationship between all of them, bro. A beautiful relationship. Like I say, literally brothers, bro. They will get together, man, Cause my house has always, my house has been one of the houses when they, when all of them get together, and we not just talking to rappers, we talking about all of them. My house was always the house, was the meeting house. I right, we going to Pop, they called me Pop. They were, I right, we going to Pop's house, they get over here, you know, uh, Duck would either, two places Duck gonna go, he gonna either go upstairs, in my bed, they across the bed, cut the TV on, he gonna go in the basement. Dutchy gonna go in the refrigerator. <laughs> Dutchy, Dutchy, thing, Dutchy thing in the refrigerator. You know, Wooski thing is goddamn it. He'll like an electric wreck. You got to down there get him and sit him down. You know, young girl go in the basement. And all them guys, they got all of them get together. We talking about all of them. Fresh. You know, all you know what, man? Not to cut you off. I don't wanna cut you off, but why are you talking about them? I kind of want to leave that to my next question, and I don't want to get off track. I got you. You spoke on a, a lot of names, and that was actually going into my next question. You know, uh, I'm pretty sure you know your sons, you know, more than anybody else on that. But on, like, the outside, a lot of people in Chicago consider them as, like, Chicago drill rap legends, okay? Um, and a lot of the people who was around them end up becoming famous just because they was around them, you know? Um, um it's a lot of guys that kind of lost their life due to gun violence that was linked to, you know, guys from St. Lawrence. Was it weird knowing that those guys used to come in your house? Was it weird seeing yeah. those passings yeah. like that? Hey, man, it got to a point where I even stopped. It got to a point. Hey, look, hey, somebody open the door. This is John. Yeah. Excuse me. All right. 
it, um, it got to it got to a point. It got to a point. But I stopped going, man. Let me tell you something. Tuka, when the first when the when it first happened to Tuka, bro, it was like unbelievable. Cause what people don't really know about Tuka, Tuka, Tuka what no game. Hey man, listen, Tuka probably was the most respectable kid I have ever known in my life. When I first met Tuka, he asked me to take him home and 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 and, and me and my kid's mother, we was in there and he came in here dressed as a yes sir, yes man, it fucked me up. I had to call that boy mama like, you raising this kid, right? Cause, you know what I mean? I mean, this kid, 13, 14, 15 years old, saying yes sir, yes ma'am. And we, that just wasn't heard of at the time, you know what I mean? Right. Then, with, then right after him, I think, Boss Trevor, now Boss Trevor, like a, 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 he was like a son to me. When he got killed, that shit tore me down. And then it just, down the hill, Lil B, Modell, this one out. Can't get, man, it was just a Taekwon. The day, the day Taekwon got killed, I think I, I was on the block, dug it behind a tree. I had just, cause I always frequently, I, if I'm in the neighborhood, I just pass back, check on them. Right. That shit happened, bro. It just, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. Yeah, that shit. That shit, man, that shit hurt, bro. Uh, you know, I always wanted to ask you that because I noticed you was, like, from the manager side, I'm pretty sure. And, you know, another thing that I wanted to ask you that I think uh, is a is a, qu a big question. I'm not sure when you say where you used to live at. Is that 6417? Nah, we stayed uh, 518 East 64th oh. Street. Okay, but I do see like those numbers on the chains that. that oh, six like, three. Nah, that's what. <laughs> that's that's what they look. That's they look. That was Trail's house. Trail mother. Oh, house. okay. She basically oh. she basically left it to them. They were that little hangout. Wherever I wanted to catch him, wherever any other other the parents, me, Dutchy Mama, Sheena, uh, Fresh Mama. Wherever we wanted to catch him at, that was the first place you go look for him at. You go on St. Lawrence and look for him there. And 99% of the time, that's where you call him at. Right. And the reason I ask you that is because, you know, that neighborhood became famous all over the world. It's a lot of neighborhoods in Chicago, millions of people, millions of streets. But 63rd, St. Lawrence, that area became famous. And, you know, from the homework and from the videos I didn't see, it looked like y'all used to actually live in that area. Was it dangerous? Like, was it nah, ever? No, nah, hey, man, let me tell you something. And this is the crazy thing about it. We stayed, we stayed 518 East 64th Street. And I don't want to say that you really kept name, but the, I, we, I bump it, I bump it to, I bump it to a lot of them get cats from Parkway, young cats, I bought a lot of them cats from 59th Street from, uh, what's that, what y'all call them? 600. 600. I bump it to a lot of them, and it's nothing, with, with me, it's nothing but respect, bro. Because at the end of the day, a lot of them cats I used to take to the show, you know what I mean? With my kid, that's 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 how fucked up this is. You go from one summer to they hanging to the next summer, all hell broke loose. So I mean, it's fucked up. But I can say this, man: when I see them kids, it's nothing to respect, bro. And it's the same thing with me. I don't, I know, you know, I'm, 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 I'm. I'm from the street, bro. At one point in time in my life, you know, and I know how this go, you know. But at the end of the day, as a man, as a parent, I don't want no other man kid hurt. But right. at the same token, God damn, if a nigga out to hurt you, man, you got to love yourself a little bit more. I don't give a fuck who it is. I mean, it's for my, like I tell my kids, you go out with that energy, Go outside, wake up, and go out with their hands. And whatever occurred, and whatever happened, then it happened. You understand what I'm saying? So that's just how that situation is. But do I, am I one of them? You will never hear me get on there and say, oh, fuck these guys. Hell no, I don't do that, bro. Because I'm the type of motherfucker that, 
Hey man, them, them, them men got daddy men. You know, I want to see, I want to see these kids. I want to see these guys, cause they ain't kids no more. But I want to see these men get old. I want to see these men know how to feel to raise your kids to grown men. I want the men to know how to feel your kids to have grandkids. Cause I'ma tell you, one thing gonna, one thing gonna change everything is time. Once you put time, cause I've been through it. Man, when you get 35, man, that gang bang shit, that killer shit for nothing. You look at it and be like, that shit wasn't worth it. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, and sir. And at the end of the day, but I still tell every little nigga out here, man, you gotta protect yourself, man. You gotta love yourself enough to protect yourself. And I get that. You know what I mean? I get that. I, I get that. I understand that. I respect that. Man. You know? Yeah, I, I don't uh, want. I want. I don't want none of these young kids. I don't care fuck where you from. I, man, it ain't cool. No old. No 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 daddy. No mama burying their kid, bro. When that shit come. When that shit come on. It shouldn't be like that. But that's where it is. So as a parent, only thing I could do is kind of get mad and still mad a certain way. And a lot of like I tell the person, a lot of shit my kids go through. They mimic what they see me do. So. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm, I look at it. Sometimes I sit back like, damn, that's my fault. You know what I mean? Cause they, a lot of shit they, they do it. They saw me do. And I, and to this day, I kind of, I, I, I damn they regret that. You know? Mm hmm. You know, I get, you know, I get, I get exactly where you're coming from. Um, you know, I ain't gonna hold you too long. Uh, I do want to ask you though. You know, I got two more questions. I don't want to hold you too long. But I do want to ask you, you know, because you were involved with a lot of legends in the culture. You managed Doug, you was behind your sons, you know, helping your sons climb. And you also knew, like, the early FBG, like the Lil' James, and you just named them. Uh, you got any advice for upcoming artists that wanted to get in this rap game? They they in the drill culture now? Yeah, did, first of all, I'm going to say all these young kids, the rap game, it's 90% business, 10% time. First of all. Second of all, you should be in the business to have somebody around you where you teach you how to control everything. You don't let no motherfucker come in and control your video, your music, your, your, your streaming situation. You control everything. Nowadays, you do not need a label unless you want it. You understand what I'm saying, man? Right. Control your situation. Be more about the business than the talent. You understand what I'm saying? Because, like I tell a person, you know, I want to put out a mixtape. I said, man, listen, one song, and if you control the situation right, it'll make you a million dollars. You feel? Me? But you got to control the situation right. You got to control the content. You got to control everything from A to Z. And you gotta be, it, it's all about right now, the one thing these young cats gotta understand, it's about branding, bro. And I preach that, it's about branding. I get on mine every day. Stop letting these motherfuckers take y'all shit and eat off y'all shit. But at the end of the day, it's a business. If you ain't paying for shit and he filming it, it's his. You know what I'm saying? But that's just what it is. You know, it's, you know, everybody trying to eat. But one thing I wanna speak on is this here, man. Is this? I want I want everybody to know this. Our situation, when I when I when when when, when things first start, started out, when did when Doug when Doug did get signed, man, it was a beautiful situation, bro. We rode the roads. I never seen these guys as happy in my life than I ever seen. <laughs> nah, real shit, you know? And it was beautiful. Right. Until, until the doors was closed. I don't know where this snake, how this snake get in. <laughs> I don't know if this motherfucker climbed through the sewer. Right. Came through the toilet drain. This motherfucker got in. But that's when all hell broke loose. That's when everything kind of fell apart, man. You understand? It just started. You just seen it. You you seen it. You just seen the manipulation. You seen the division. You seen everything, and it was one individual. I mean, I really don't want to get a nigga. 
I don't really want to, I'm just going to keep it a hundred with you, you know. You may have heard about, you. I think you interviewed it's the cat called One Trey. One Trey, uh, LBG One Trey. And he ain't, well, I, I, ain't, I ain't LBG, so I don't know, but these little niggas say he ain't LBG, bro. So, but I know one thing, he a true snake. I know that. I know what he have done. I know how he moved, how he moved the money around the YouTube page. I know how he sit up and implicated all of this, bro. Like I say, at the end of the day, oh, I never did nothing wrong. The duck never took nothing, ain't gonna take nothing. Love his mama. Don't have no ear wheels to her. I apologize for doing that weak shit I did. You know, when it came to me taking that $8,000 back, that was weak. And I'm mad enough to me, that was weak. You understand? This your mama right here. Fake Jack Mello. Hello? Yeah. Hold on for one minute. Hold on, hold on. Yo, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, no, that's just what it was, man. They messed up a beautiful situation. I know, I'm not saying if that person went there, you know, that wouldn't, that wouldn't happen to Doug because at the end of the day, it's God's will. You know what I'm saying? But my job, you know, I love Sheena, bro. I love Sheena. And, he, and I'm, I'm going to say this. My kids still love that woman like a mother, bro. They still love her. I love her. Now, I could be... Would I want a repair relationship? Yeah, because, you know, at the end of the day, I know Sheena. I know that woman got a good heart. But she know me as well. She know I ain't gonna take too much, too much of nothing. No BS or nothing. Well, can we sit down and talk? Hey man, that's, man, any one of them, any one of them, Dutchie mama tell you, any one of them mama tell you what kind of guy I am, bro. If they wanna check me if I did something wrong, I'm mad enough to sit down and listen to them. And, they, and that have happened. But they, every last one of them know, man, I got these kids' best interests, man. I got their best interest, and I just want them to be successful, small, and just just keep grinding, bro. That's it. You know, I love you, Sheena. 